The Rockefeller chain was created and Jay-Z gave us reasonable doubt. George Foreman goes 12 with the Axel Schultz for heavyweight title and Bill Gates was announced the world's richest man. 1995 was the end of MJ's brief retirement and continuation of a dynasty. Tinker designed a special shoe for the occasion, the Concord 11. This was a super high performance shoe called the Jordan 11. And uh, this shoe was like, I think it's my all time favorite shoe because there is so much technology in this shoe. Tinker took a bit of a different approach with this one. The materials range from a ballistic mesh upper, carbon fiber spring plate, and patent leather. The marriage of unique materials made for a much lighter, faster, and durable sneaker. Most would say that the majority of Tinker's earlier designs had some type of cultural influence outside of the court. And Tinker had no idea that off the court, the first debut would be in such formal fashion and Amal Rashad broke the dress code showing us his. Because on the back of him, they have number 45. So if he's not wearing his old shoes, I guess there's nothing else that I could do but take his old shoes home. Marv? Yes. <laughs> Amal sporting the, uh, the cotton club look there. Jordan went on to win the 1995-1996 NBA championship against the Supersonics. And the 11 Retro became one of the most coveted Jordans to date. Is it the best Jordan now? All right. All right, what's happening, everybody? It's your boy, DJ. It's your boy, AJ. And we are the DNA Show. And this is a huge release for us, because obviously you can tell there's a lot of history, a lot of just, I don't even know, nostalgia, everything. There's just so much going on with this shoe. Right off the bat, can you tell which one is the new one? Da -da 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 -da. I already told you guys. <laughs> so, what are your first thoughts on the sneaker, just compared to the collection? I think it's cool. We saw it with the Space Jam with the cut, with the ice blue sole, mm -hmm. the 45 in the back. Like, we've seen it before. I like it. I sold my Space Jam because I wanted to hoop it, but I'm like, I'd rather have the money. So, for this shoe, I probably will hold out. I have the 2000 pair, mm -hmm. have the 11 pair. I'm good. Me personally, <laughs> as you can see, the collection lines up. It all makes sense. I don't really want to get the sneaker as well, just because of having the other ones. I'm still working on beating these pairs, but I just feel like it's only right to pick up the shoe. It makes mm -hmm. sense yeah. just for a collector's purpose, but when it will be rocked, who knows? I don't, I have no clue when that's going to happen. So who knows about this pair right here? That, I don't even think this should be at the table. I'm going to be honest with you. Why'd you put this on the table? Tell me. Well, I mean, it has the same colorway, except for it's like a gold edition. But if you know it's not a part of the discussion, it's, it's, it's not separate. Uh, <laughs> we should put this one on a pedestal. Just so I, you see it this gold box higher. right here? It's a little bit higher. Exactly. <laughs> that right there. How many pairs do you have? Two pairs? Yeah, I got two sets now. I've been through like four or five, but I kept two dead stock sets. This might be worn on my, like, I don't know. I don't know when I'm gonna be wearing this. I just know these these are like the holy grails for all sneakerheads. At least I know that it came up from about 10 years ago for sure. And then we have what cleats, we got low tops, baby shoes. I mean overall this is probably oh man, it's hard to say if it's the most iconic shoe. I think for our generation, the 11 is probably the most popular mm -hmm. uh, model for for us. So growing up, I know I had I wanted the space jams. I wanted the Concords, the breads. Yes. I had I had the bread, yes. so that that had like a sentimental value, sentimental value for me. For sure. But uh, the Concords for sure is a classic shoe. You cannot go wrong. If you didn't get the other pairs, you should definitely snag this pair for sure. The 45 on the back is a dope hit. Um, and overall, I think this will age pretty well with the mm -hmm. blue bottoms. Uh, I, I think it'll Speaking age well. of that, actually, we should go into the comparison and show you guys the difference between the aging and the soles, the materials, the cuts, and a little bit of short history on each sneaker and how it came about. Because uh, like you're saying about aging, there's, uh, there's some different things in the soles that you'll see that you'll be very surprised by. For sure. So let's go ahead and hop into that and we'll be right back at you. Air Jordan 11 Concord 2018 Retro, released in December 8th, retail $220. First, I wanna start with the box. This is the exact same box as the original Air Jordan 11 from back in the day. Going into the back of the sneaker, this is something that everyone has been talking about. The 45 on the back, the cut, and the materials. So I want to show you guys differences between each shoe. I'm going to keep the left foot the same, and the right foot is going to continue to change throughout the video. Starting off with the first one, we're going to go with the cleat. 
this cleat released earlier this year and obviously it's a football cleat so it has a different sole the cut on the patent leather is actually pretty much the same the material is a little bit thicker and then obviously you can see the 23 on the back compared to the 45. going into the low top you can tell the major difference between the high and the low cut it has a small 23 on the back with a little jump man in the back symbol instead of on the side where the ankle is at here's a baby shoe from 2011 and obviously you can tell there's a huge difference in size cut and everything with it just wanted to guys show you guys this one because it's a part of the collection now going into the 2011 retro this is the hugest comparison everyone's been talking about just because it's the most recent concord that everybody's been able to wear over the past couple years so first things that you can see is the 23 on the back is going sideways and it's pretty wide compared to the vertical 45 on the left foot another big thing that i think is very very noticeable is the cut on the back of the sneaker if you look at the patent leather on the right foot you can tell that it's way lower than the new og style now the og concord 11 had a high cut patent leather and everybody was kind of bugging out when they saw that the 2011 retro didn't have that high of a cut now let's look at the 2009 sample this is a sample that really has never been seen before and I'm not sure if anybody really cares about it, but let's go ahead and show you anyways. It's a little bit different on the cut and the shape of the shoe. This was made in 2009 and the retro came out in 2011, but they made the shape of the shoe similar to the Space Jam 11. We'll show you more about that later in the next video. Here is the Holy Grail, the DMP 11. Now obviously you can tell there's a huge difference because he has the gold on the back with the gold on the Jumpman. And then the patent leather cut is a little bit higher, but not too much. So it's it's i don't know it's kind of hard to say but it's i guess you could say it's preference based on which one do you like so do you like the high cut or do you like the low cut now going into the 2000 pair right here now this is not any 2000 concord 11. this is michael jack stop it this is michael jordan's personal pair size 13 and a half sample that he wore made for him this was his wear around shoe i was lucky enough to get my hands on this shoe a couple years ago and i'm never gonna let this thing go this is honestly one of the biggest grails in my collection okay back to the side of the shoe i want to show you guys the front and just kind of the cut if you want to look at the toe you see the patent leather here and then the cut on the back towards the ankle and then some of the mesh i want to show you the differences and how it's evolved over the years with each sneaker so let's go ahead and hop into the cleat you can see a little bit difference on the toe here and then going into the low top you see it's a lot smoother and lower on the low top at the toe and the baby shoe obviously is cut way different with the different outsole now here you have the new pair and you have the 2011 pair look at the toes look at the difference now look at the back and look at the difference look at the spacing on the white leather in the back compared to the spacing on the white leather on the back here a little bit different huh let's go into the 2009 pair now you can see it's shaped a little bit different compared to the 2011 pair and that's because it has a space jam shape going into the dmp you can tell it's way smoother and a lot lower on the leather and then if you look at the back obviously the biggest hit is the gold jump man everyone loves that and then into the og now i want to compare this to the og now you can see the differences it's actually pretty much the same shoe i mean this one has a little bit of age to it but it's pretty much the same shoe and I know this is the first retro, not the OG OG, but this is the first retro. I want to show you a little bit difference now on the lace holes and how tight it was compared to the 2000 pair. Here's the 2018 pair on the right and here's the 2000 pair on the left. Now you see the laces and everything looks exact same. Now let's hop into the 2011 pair and the 2018 pair. Now you can see the difference. You have the 2018 on the left, the 2011 on the right. The way these are two both dead stock sneakers but the way they laced them and how far they separated the lace holes is a big difference on the sneaker the way it stacks inside the foot going into the sole you have an ice blue sole solid carbon fiber nothing too bad and then you have a football cleat now this is the low top very similar to the new one this one released in 2014 so it hasn't really aged as much and if you go to the 2011 pair you can see the pods now a lot of people's pairs are yellow and really bad and then it has an orange type hue coming around each pod and mine has that hue but the sole for itself hasn't really yellowed that much so it's been pretty good now this is the 2009 sample it has been worn 
but you can tell no yellowing around the pods, which is kind of weird, right? Because it's a 2009 sample and this is a 2011 retro. There's no yellowing on this 2009. Hopping into the DMP, this one is icy. It kind of has a gold tint, but I think it was meant to be like that. There's no yellowing around the pods and it's super clean. Must have sneaker in your collection. Going into the OG, it's got a little bit of yellowing just from character and over time, nothing too crazy. As you see, there's nothing around the paws, just kind of yellowing all over. So it's not too bad. Overall, this is a little look at the shoes. Here's a couple looks at the back of the sneakers, just so you can see the differences between the OGs and the cuts in a different angle. And here's a look at everything. Which one of these is your favorite? Please let us know down in the comment section. Let's kick it back to the boys and finish this video off. So what do you guys think about the review? Which era, which shoe was your very favorite one of all these? Me personally, I always come from the root of the OG of every single sneaker. So no matter how nice and clean this one looks, I still have to go with the OG just because of that. It's just, this is where it all came from. If it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for Tinker, there would be none of this. So for me, I'm, I'm still rocking with this one. For sure. First retro for me as well, 2000 pair. That yellow is beautiful. It's like a bronze to me, you know, it's, this right here is the sign of maturity. And when you get mature and you're wise and you're old, you've seen a lot, you know, there's, you can't go wrong with it. So this right here for me is my personal favorite. Um, I think they went crazy with this cleat though. Mm -hmm. Man, when these came out, beautiful. I, it's, it's crazy because when a cleat comes out now and it's general release, you see right. everybody with it. Right. And as a sneakerhead, you want some exclusivity. Right. But I feel like 10 years down the road, if they don't retro these again as a cleat, right. this is going to be a gym. Mm -hmm. These are going to go for three, 400 bucks easily. That's exactly why I got the whole collection. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check out above on that. But let's get back into this video. So I think they did a really good job comparing the new newest retro to the OG. You could definitely tell the differences between like the 2011 pair and obviously the low top is low top. But I think it has a lot of similarity to it. The back on the leather is a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. The height, the cut of the leather um, on the patent leather. It, it all kind of makes sense. Obviously they do the blue tint on the sole, but it used to be like that back in the day. It did. So it really makes a lot of sense for this new retro. And they have been doing a good job on making the newer retros look similar to the OG, similar to like the ones, fours, different things like that. Very true, very true. So the next biggest question is, how do you guys feel about this shoe? We always are interested in your opinions. We know we got some people at Jordan Man watching this, so tell them what you think down in the comment section. They might actually listen to you and implement that on the next sneaker. With that being said, you already know what time it is. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video, do all the things you're supposed to do. It's our time to go. We gotta go make some more videos. I don't know what else to say. I think we're supposed to check that out. We can't watch that way, so we gotta turn this up.